Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make peanut butter cookies using natural peanut butter. Um, this sounded like a great idea at the store, you know. All natural, no salt, no sugar. And I got it home and I opened the jar and I tasted some and it was like, oh. And I don't know if you've ever seen a dog with peanut butter, but it's kind of like, like that. And it runs off the toast and it just doesn't taste right. So, I thought, what am I going to do with this stuff, right? Um, so, I looked up a recipe for it to see if I could make some cookies. And I tried it. And did you know that there are people on the internet that put up recipes that don't work? So, that may not be a surprise to some of you. But anyways, um, so I changed it and I got one that worked. Okay? So, I'm going to show you that. Um, so, for this, yes, you will need natural peanut butter. I don't know what's going to happen if you use regular, um, so either get some or make another recipe. Um, and if you've got a jar stuck in the cupboard doing nothing well, this is the recipe for you. It's really simple to make. Here's the ingredients. If you've never seen this stuff, it's kind of runny as you can see and because it's natural and it has no chemicals in it which is a plus actually um, you do have to stir it up with a spoon before you can even start to measure it and you can see there's chunks in there so try to get that all evened out now the one advantage of using this stuff is you can absolutely control the amount of salt and sugar that you put into your cookies so that is a big plus okay since the measure is a cup and a half, um, I use a half a cup and measure it three times. Now, you can see it's really ooky, so be slow in measuring that. I saved my spatula to scrape it out and stir it up. Okay, so there's half a cup, close enough. I'm going to scrape that in the bowl and do two more times. Well, that was fun. Okay, so I got my peanut butter in the bowl ready to go there. Um, my oven is preheated to 350. This is really important you do this first. Because uh, these are, strangely enough, really fast to make. And if you're waiting on your oven to preheat, you're going to lose the um, effect of the baking powder. Not that these really need lift, but you'll notice at the end they give them a nice pattern on the top of the cookie and makes them look really store-bought. So, I've got my sugar measured in a bowl and there is a reason I've got a big wide bowl for this because I'm going to be beating eggs in here as well. So put in your baking powder and salt. Now, for whatever reason you don't think there's enough salt, add more, but I find that a half a teaspoon for two dozen cookies Lends just a nice little flavor without being too salty. Just mix the baking powder and salt briefly. Now, if you don't have baking powder, yes, you could use baking soda. However, do not use the box that you keep in the fridge because your cookies will taste funny. In a similar bowl, just beat your eggs with a fork until they're well mixed in. Then add your sugar in portions. I start with a couple of two, three spoons. So you notice once you've got that mixed in, it will make sort of a ribbon. And doing this by beating some air into it and using the baking powder, uh, it'll make your cookies nice and airy. Um, now they are a soft, chewy cookie, but it still is nice that they're not heavy and dense. And you'll see what I mean when I'm finished. So now, no stages for this, dump all of that in. and just get the rest out with the spatula 
you want all the eggs and sugar in there. So picking it up from the bottom, mix the peanut butter in here. Now I know this looks hopeless right now. Bear with me. There's some kind of weird chemical reaction that you can see happening in front of you where all of a sudden that totally runny mess just starts to set up on its own. Look at that. So just keep at it with the spatula for a minute. Until you can start to see it sort of kind of get pockets and threads in it. Same way I can describe it. You see what I mean? Now when it looks like it's starting to stay put on its own, that is when you start to make the cookies. Now, for this, I always get gloves. Um, you can do this barehanded, um, but I'll tell you right now, your hands are going to get really greasy and take forever to wash after and you'll wish you hadn't. Plus gloves are just more hygienic. So let me get my sheets and a pair I'll be right back. You want to go pretty quick with these, so what I'm going to do is just grab about that much batter, use a spatula to drop it on the sheet, get all my globs out, and then I'm going to even them up and make the cookies after they're all on the sheet. That one just fell, that was not on purpose, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm missing a couple of cookies and I'm absolutely determined to make two dozen. So what you do to do that is just take a look at which ones look like they have too much. Pull some off. It's kind of like dough, uh, play, it's kind of like plasticine. Yeah, just pull some off and borrow from one to the other until you've got two dozen cookies. Now, if you're not obsessed with how many cookies you've got, because I did say the recipe makes two dozen, um, you can just go whatever and make them as is. However, by, you, by taking the effort to make sure that they're all the same size, um, that way they'll cook evenly and also look nicer. Once those are evened up as good as you're going to get, and don't take too long, just grab one of the chunks and roll it in your hand till it makes a ball. Do that with the rest of them. Last step is get a clean fork and briefly press them down. I would not grease the fork. They're greasy enough as it is. They'll stick a bit, but that's fine. Now that one's not cooperating, so you can push it back into shape. These will not really keep on the bake, but it adds a little bit more texture and do the cross hatches traditional. Those are all ready to go in. Now, as for baking times, um, the finished cookie is your personal preference. 10 minutes minimum will give you a sort of cookie dough texture completely and you're going to wonder if the eggs are cooked right through. I don't really recommend that. Uh, 15 minutes is going to give you crispy cookies, sort of like you get in a bag. I personally find 12 to 13 minutes to be absolute optimum because you get chewy cookies that are baked all the way through. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 13 minutes at 350, no convection. 
and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, 13 minute mark. I set up my camera so you can have a look at what they look like still in the oven. And I'll just zoom in a bit there for you. Yeah. See, they have that nice kind of store-bought crackle look. So I'll just pop those out. And I don't know if you can see them. I'll just put them on the stove. Now these are very soft right now, so it's important that you not intersect the cookie with the thumb of your oven mitt because you'll just mash it flat. So I'm going to let these sit here probably for about 10-15 minutes before I even try to transfer them to the wire rack for complete cooling or else they'll just break. It's been about 15 minutes and they've cooled down enough that you can touch them, they're not completely cool yet. This is what they look like. Nice and soft. I'll try a piece. Oh, that's really good. They're still warm. So if you like your cookies warm and soft and slightly chewy, have them now. I'm going to transfer them to cooling rack. Just transfer them all to a cooling rack to dry out and cool off completely. Now, if you want to keep this texture, what's important is as soon as they're cooled off, transfer them to an airtight container or yes, they will dry out. So that's how I make natural peanut butter cookies. I hope you have a chance to use up that jar in the cupboard if you got one. And if you like using natural stuff, just go out and get one. They're really easy and they're really good. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.